Good morning, my dear and herren. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Bid you a very warm welcome to the Peruvian Spanish contribution to the festival, La Teta Sustada, Milk of Sorrow. Firstly, I'd like to introduce the panel at the very far right, Antonio Chavarias, one of the producers. Next to him, Pilar Guerrero, Pilar Guerrero, one of the actresses. And then the director, Claudia Llosa. Next to her, Magali Soye, the main actress, the lead actress. And José María Morales, also a producer. And I can tell you this, that this is the first Peruvian film to participate in the competition ever of the Berlinale, and we are very pleased to be able to show this film. Your questions, please. Anne Christine Oranger, Intercinet. Muchas gracias para esta película muy emocionante, muy muy intelectual también, refinada. Muy muy refinada. Una pregunta sobre este sujeto. Concerning the subject matter, this milk of sorrow. Is this a true illness? Does it really exist? And is there any help for indigenous women suffering? Of this, or is this something of is this a popular myth in a way? First of all, thank you. I'd like to thank you all for being present here, and we're very pleased to be here ourselves. To tell you the truth, it is an illness that is well known in Peru. It uh, affects people living in the mountains, and um, even though there are some studies, scientific studies, and some uh, reports on this, it is really an illness that is part of the uh, popular knowledge. And there are some. Uh, there is a report that was that came out a couple of years ago, and there were some uh, testimonies. La barbarie del terrorismo. In that report, given by women that had suffered from the terrorism of the age, and then was also this aspect of the milk of sorrow that is continually repeated, and it was such a graphic description, such a graphic name given to it. This whole 
suffering that is passed on from generation to generation if it's not looked at and dealt with in the appropriate way. And that's why we decided to look into it in depth. And I started talking to psychoanalysts who had uh, treated people suffering from this uh, symptom from this illness, and it is really also linked to the uh, shamanistic rituals, and there is very few official psychoanalyst, uh, psychoanalytic or um, scientific uh, research on it, but it is a true illness, it is a, a real affliction, and it is, uh, there is an attempt, a very strong attempt to improve the situation to help these women start peaking, speaking about what they have suffered, but of course the effort is still uh, too little and uh, we need to go on. Miguel Ángel Pérez from Spain. congratulations for the film, a brilliant film. I have a question for the actress, for Magali. Uh, the songs, uh, I'm very, I, I was, I've been very impressed for the songs. Uh, you are the author of the songs, and could you tell us something more about um, if they are just improvisation or what kind of uh, traditional culture is in it? Thank you. Yes, hello, and thank you. As far as the songs are concerned, I created them really for this character for Fausta. Those are songs that I wrote, but I had to differentiate between what the uh, character is and what Magali Soler is, because I also sing, and Fausta has a very different way of singing and also finding consolation within song. And, of course, I spent hours and hours sitting at the piano, really just uh, pressing a single note, looking, trying to find Fausta. And I'm very pleased to have achieved what the director also was looking for in this character, in this figure. Thank you very much. Thank you for this film, a fantastic film. Um, I will continue speaking German. And what I felt was really perfectly crafted was the interior world of the person and the exter exterior world that is also determined by the cultural globalization in a way, the uh, at a certain moment, I had the impression that this was sort of, sort of overemphasized, and the question is, this ritual, the ritual of marriage, this collective wedding that takes place, is that an authentic element? Is that that would be my first question. It is a very typical uh, cer wedding ceremony. I mean, this is Lima, and in every one of the neighborhoods of uh, the or in every part of the city, it is the mayor who organizes this, and it is takes place exactly in that way. The bride and the groom come together, and they're all married at the same time. We were able to assist at the very, f the very first mass wedding in Manchai. That was where we uh, shot the film, and that's where we also did the casting. And all of those who actually wed or married a couple of days before we started shooting came to the shooting of the film dressed exactly the same way as they had married a couple of days pre previously. Just an additional question. The main actress and the main actor uh, speak an indigenous language, local language, that uh, is very often the case in Latin America, except for Chile, Buenos Aires, and some other places. Well, 
predominantly Argentina, of course, but my question is, did you have uh, amateur actors that you also casted and that also participated in the film, and how did you include them in the, the setup of the film? Well, Effectively, Quechua is an indigenous language in my country, not only in my country, but also in Ecuador, Bolivia, and in the uh, Argentinian Amazonas, and in the north of uh, Colombia. It is a language that is spoken by 70 to 80 percent of the population in my country. Perhaps you can say a little bit more about Quechua. Thank you. Quechua is is being lost a little, but I'm not afraid nor ashamed of speaking Quechua. Perhaps you can translate, I'm afraid we can't. Quechua, for example, in Ecuador is different from Yacucho or from uh, Bolivia. But the language is still alive. And during the shooting of the film, we had many people who were speaking Quechua from different zones of Peru. Efrain, who is the gardener, um, and um, the, um, Magali come from different uh, uh, regions in the world, uh, uh, in Peru. And so, and you were, they were really arguing about how to say things because they had different versions of the same language. And my job was really to bring it somehow together because, of course, course, the various differences are lost, uh, according to the region, of course. What was the question? Yes. As far as the actresses are concerned, yes, there, are, there is a mix between actors that are professional actors and other actors that are amateur actors. For example, Susi Sanchez, she's a Spanish actress that is very well known. Magali, this is her second uh, film because she already uh, had a role in Made in USA that I had already uh, shot in 2006, Pilar, for, for example, who never had been in front of a camera in her life before. And the rest of the cast, probably 80% of them, were people who had never been in front of a camera before. And I think that they did a marvelous job. Thank you. So that you can see. Quechua, you can sing us, Magali can sing us a small song in Quechua, yes, of course, because the, the, the softness of Quechua is really impressive. I will, is somebody, I will do as if somebody is going behind you all and I will sing to this person. Hacha huyacha, hacha, chaquicha, chajala, zapacha, puca, huyacha, sitana. Esta canción también es compuesta por Magali en su nuevo disco que lanzó este año. Created by Magali and it's was published on her uh, record that came, that was published this year. I'd like to ask the director whether it is uh, a common use to use the potato this way or whether this was created for the film. No, this is part of the fiction, no aspect of the film. I think all of these aspects that you see in the film are uh, independently really drawn up. They were inspired by reality, and then from then they were taken from different parts of life so as to create a fabric that is the fabric of the film. This uh, topic of the pap potato was uh, related to me by a colleague who had seen a compar comparable case and had nothing to do with this topic of the uh, milk of sorrow. And I talked with the specialists who said that it could actually happen and how long that could go on. And of course, this, I'd say the more technical aspect of this story, I talked about with them. And I think that this, the strength really rely is in the image, the um, potato as a kind of shield, a protective shield, a kind of... Uh, um, 
lid Ente extraño que no, que pueda to fend off any intruder a ella. who would try to tiempo, approach papa, her. Pues and at the same time, the potato, I think most of you, of course, know that it uh, symbolizes many things in my country. In my country, it is the root, it is fertility, it is earth, it is tradition, it is what we are. And at the same time, it can also convey this idea of the of a trauma, of a burden, of, of a wound that we carry that has to be hid like a tumor, but that is always, that will always grow and that will always find a way to surface, a way of appearing. Vamos, yo creo que la película I believe that this film, or the idea of the potato, speaks of this struggle, of the ancestral struggle, not to perish in front of modernity or the onslaught of modernity. De cómo, cómo and that also talks about how, or speaks about how we can eh, walk or move towards the future without having to carry the burden or so much burden of the past. But of course, if we lose somos, the past, we also lose who we are, our identity, our roots, esencia, no? our essential being. So how can we create a balance to maintain the historical roots, the memories, the cultural memories, and at the same time have the capacity to move ahead and to look towards the future without having to carry too much burden. I believe that that is what uh, this uh, image of the potato really carries. So before we come to the next question, I would like to ask the two producers a question. The fact that you shot on location in Peru and that you worked with uh, amateur actors, did that lead to certain difficulties or specific difficulties or specific beauty? Well, the film was completely shot on location in Peru and the entire post-production and uh, preparation for distribution was made and was done in Barcelona. And that is why the uh, uh, previous work that needed to be then harmonized to working between teams in Peru and Barcelona. In Peru we had a completely uh, uh, a completely Peruvian team, there were no problems there and there were certainly no problems that went beyond that that you might have uh, in other, on other shootings and I think that as far as the team in Barcelona was concerned they also worked very well. I think that these two teams really came together and I think that as far as communication was concerned there was no problem. That's true. Bringing these two cultures together in my work was absolutely marvelous, bringing the best of two worlds together. We had uh, teams that were absolutely committed, that really were working under very difficult, difficult circumstances. But I think that both teams uh, came together and uh, created a, uh, a good balance. Yes. Hello for La Jornada in Mexico. Por más kitsch que pueda parecerle, Even though it might Europa, appear very uh, kitsch to European eyes, we, Mexico, you, Peru, our world, our traditions, the things that are continued and that at some time might appear fictitious, like uh, collective uh, weddings and this uh, um, wedding pie. But with this work, do you try, are you, is your aim to try to show to the world what we are? These are our traditions. Is this something that you are trying to insist on? We're different in, in Latin America. I mean, you're blonde, you have uh, clear eyes. Of course, that is, is that the diversity of our cultures? But at the same time, trying to attempt to say to the world, this is how we are, this is how we work, and this is how we will continue to be. What was your attempt sí, there. Parte, parte es well, no? partly, sure, to show that, miedos, without eh, having any qualms or any fears about that, really showing who we are. I think our film shows how 
a large part of indigenous people comes down from the mountains, converges on Lima looking for a modern life and try to insert themselves into modernity and they are trying, they have hope, they are really committed, they are also happy, even though they live in very precarious conditions, they survive and they use their knowledge, their traditions, their rituals, their dreams, their songs, not only to repair or to heal unconsciously wounds, perhaps, but also to move on ahead. I believe that that was really fascinating to see how life is celebrated, but also how death is uh, dealt with. It's very, very different from other ways of dealing, dealing with death. In, in the Andean region, death is part of, uh, of, of the cycle of life, really, and malki, which also means uh, Rain also means mummy. So in Quechua, death and life is one, in a way, is united. Just like the yin and yang symbol. I believe that this type of film tries to um, uh, uh, really bring this to the fore and show it to the world, not only to Europe, but also to people in Lima, for example. I think there's a necessity to recognize ourselves, to look at ourselves, but not just uh, with a, with a, a, a site that is only one-sided. We have to ha create a dialogue. It has to go both ways. Claudia Perez. Claudia Perez. What type of support did you get for your production from Germany? You already know that we have been working with Match Factory, and I'd like to thank them at this point because thanks to them, we were able to accede. It was a World Cinema Fund. We were able to access the World Cinema Fund, and we had a very strong support from them on their part, and also to write the script, but also then to shoot the film. It's the World Cinema Fund in Berlin that uh, helped us. It is, um, it is a fund that helps or is supposed to support the uh, writing process. Uh, we had a few uh, scripts that were presented, and this was one of them, and we received uh, funds that were important. We had a fund from the Fund Sudest, and we also had uh, help from the ICA, the Spanish Film Institute, IFIC, which is the Catalan, Catalan Institute for Film, which is not Spanish, so you have to note this. I think nowadays you cannot make this type of very intimate, very delicate film without the support and the help of all of those who offered and volunteered to help. And it's really great to be able to be here, and it's thanks to them that we are here today. Claudia, a uh, question from Madrid. I think that you already spoke about modernity and tradition and how you can look at both. I believe that uh, film as uh, extraordinary as this one can also uh, work as a, an anthropological or a documentary because it talks so much about the Quechua identity. Is it, uh, whether it is in the rural area or in the um, suburbs of the city, are there traditions, uh, pre-Columbian tra traditions that are uh, pre-Columbian traditions that are maintained? Well, Quechua is... Uh, uh, an orally transmitted language, and I believe that we should give much more support and give it much more importance, even though in more and more schools Quechua is now being taught, but it still falls short, falls short of what is necessary. As, said, as Magali said, there is this aspect of shame. People hide 
their language. No, lo remi no, eh, no se relaciona con la because modernidad, no se it has nothing to do with modernity, it has nothing to do with urban reality, eh, it has nothing to do with Spanish. Bien, yo creo que la, and uh, la mezcla de cultura it's, siempre it's also true, because, and, and, and it's, it's a shame because I think the mix la, of culture is always enriching. I think we should not just protect a single a simple culture or a single culture, but we need to also promote the, the mix of cultures, which is so rich. But it is also important to maintain culture. But I also believe that the way I think it is, uh, the way it has been maintained is thanks to the uh, people themselves who have uh, transmitted it and continued the tradition. I want to ask you, to the director, I was overwhelmed of how you portrayed the ruler parts of the film, you know, with the families, because uh, one family, although they were all together, one family was joyful, we had uh, transvestite, we have, and the other f part of the family, they were more peasants, let's say they were peasants, and uh, you were using the music sometimes, like showing that when they were sad, there was this kind of uh, slow music, and then there was this tapping with the feet, uh, how did you manage to do this? Is this the real uh, point of the society there? That they're also in the same society they're different? Yes, because life is a mix of so many different elements. Death ex exists alongside life, and that has always been so, even though we wish to hide it below the bed. And laughter coincides with tears, and, and that is also true as far as the music is concerned. Music is very important in the film, as you mentioned, because at uh, some point it helps, it, is a soothe, it has a soothing character, and it also says things that we would not like to say or speak out loudly. So it is a bit vehicle for a number of things that can be communicated, the sufferings, the the, the imaginative aspect of the characters too. This is also part of the only from the point of view that of this dialogue that happens between Aida and Fausta. Suddenly they are listening to each other and and that and that suddenly they speak out. And when Fausta stops singing to herself, and she, she starts singing towards somebody else, and so that it is heard by somebody else, things start uh, moving again, and the water starts flowing again, and the movement starts taking the upper hand again. So I think the way we evolved this was uh, very natural in the uh, script. We had en, en este, Fausta, este who was very familiar, introverted and who was protected by her uncle no within the nucleus of her vida, family, no, but at the same time they incite her to continue with her life. They uh, call upon her to start breathing again at a certain moment too. A, a and a, um, she suddenly, as of that point, uh, regains her self-esteem, her self-confidence. I think that is part of the film, to try to find a way to accept yourself, to respect yourself, and to also reveal yourself to others. I have a question for Pilar. I think it was the very first time that you uh, appeared before camera, and I would like to ask you what the strongest impressions were from the shooting of the film for you? Thank you. I'm a bit nervous. It's the very first time for me. And as you know, it was also my first film. And it wasn't easy. But it was something that I really enjoy from when I was uh, a child. I always imagined myself up on the silver screen. Of course. The beginning was difficult, but then it became more and more something natural. And uh, this ambition, I had always had this ambition. I always wanted for things to work out well. And that is why it wasn't difficult for me to take on this role of Maxima. I <laughs> can't say more. Ese dialogo, this ese dialogue that takes off between Aida and her um, employee 
that no really embargo, happens through the music. But there is still some form of discrimination and also depreciation in a way or um, because at a certain moment she transmits also at, at a certain moment she says that she was proud of the uh, success that the song had and that is the moment where the dialogue then cuts off so there's a discrimination that takes their case there and there was also a sign on the wall that was a, that said Peru that studies is Peru is a triumphant Peru, Peru. is that what you believe is the case that if Peru studies that they can do away with uh, discrimination well, de una manera obvia en, yes, en, 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 but en el tema de la educación, creo que this movie has eh, no direct link to the topic of education, but I think it was important to have se, se, this se wedding colegio, of Maxima, which is taking place in the school, and all of these girls are asleep in a classroom. So we wanted to convey this message that Peru, a studying Peru, is a Peru that progresses, and I think that education is a very, very important topic for our country, and we wanted to support this, and that is why we showed it in the film. I'm going to not stop humiliating myself and speaking in English. Um, there is uh, exploitation between the employer, the pianist, uh, I love the analogy of the pearls, and I love that she regains her self-esteem in what is, belongs to her. Um, but I would like to know also if there is still this kind of exploitation uh, to the Quechua people. And as rape has been used and is being used right now as a weapon of war and as a weapon of genocide, it was definitely the case in Rwanda and in other places, in Darfur, for example, is, was this the case also in Peru? Uh, aimed at uh, Quechua people or other uh, Native American Indians? El, bueno, la, con a, a la pregunta, as far as the first question is concerned, el que it is la true, de ambas this uh, sort of eh, profit that exists in this relation between both. It is uh, accepted by both Casi. characters in a way and in a very uh, um, subtle way. They're not, it's not sp outspoken. They both know exactly what is happening. Eh, that is important. Es el en que Fausta it is this moment de where de Fausta de actually de expresses her pleasure at what happens. And this a suddenly a la de la casa. then uh, really eh, affects and Im has an impact claro que, on claro the lady of the house. And it's, it's true. There is a difficulty claro in this dialogue because, of course, there's this garage no, uh, no door that opens automatically, that jardín, closes yo, off, you know, and eh, nothing enters this garden, no? and I want eh, to live in this garden surrounded by my birds. But at the same time, cierra, it also happens when you open the newspaper and close the newspaper or you turn off the TV. I think there's a certain hypocrisy with which we ignore or stubbornly ignore poverty and misery is something that is uh, ubiquitous in the world. And I think it is shown as part of the conflict, even though there is a dialogue, even though there is a kind of uh, closeness, there is always uh, the struggle, that there's a, diff uh, there's a difference. And there's a difficulty then to really come together at the end. We are always slaves of the conditions in which we live. I think, what, what did you say afterwards, as far as the second question was concerned? Yes, the rape. Yes, the topic of rape. Yes, there is this uh, uh, fear that, uh, that, that really makes you stop cold, really, that, really, that, that stifles any action and that keeps you in prison and also destabilizes the, uh, the, the people because it is their wives, their children, their daughters that are being raped. And uh, there's one point where the uh, women have to take up arms to defend themselves because nobody knows anymore who's the good one and who's the bad guy in the story. And the real problem is the incapacity to really work through this topic even though this uh, war has ended. The victims in Peru, um, in contrast to 
situations in other countries were not really taken up. They were not, uh, they were not uh, shielded or were not helped. People did not want to have anything to do with their story, with their pain. They told them to really go away and be alone with their pain. They didn't want to have any relationship with this uh, pain. And that was why they could not uh, express their victimhood in a way. And very often, Many of those who were, uh, um, who were raped during that time did not have any documents. They, did not, uh, they were not able to prove their existence in a way and prove their suffering because they had no official documents and they had no place to go. So they had to, to wait until the authorities went up into the mountains to prove that this was uh, their son, for example, who had been killed, and if they just simply buried their son who had been killed, um, he didn't exist for the authorities. So I believe that it is not quite uh, important to know who the uh, culprit is. We have to really confront the wound. We have to speak about it and accept forgiveness, which is what is required. Martin Rosefeld, Martin from, Rosefeld Arte, from Arte, question for uh, Claudia Riosa. I think the question was uh, partly answered already, but I wanted to hark back to this aspect that Isidra, I almost said Isidra, well, the, the woman for whom she works, is she's an artist. And I wanted to know how much... Uh, permeability exists between this upper class artist uh, group and the lower class in Peru? Is there a kind of exploitation there really or is there um, also some form of uh, communication that exists between these various social classes that are very segregated from each other? Well, there's always there's a uh, taking and giving that goes on. There's always a relationship, uh, almost uh, miming each other, because I think both need each other. That is the problem. And that, in the end, becomes a vicious circle, too. I think the film shows very clearly uh, Lima that looks, that you see from the distance, you see how removed these, uh, these uh, settlements are. So it keeps it really at an arm's length, or at least very removed. I also believe that you also real, it's also shown in this, with this automatic garage door that opens and closes on a reality, so that if the only as if the only possibility to live in Lima were to sort of, you know, keeping one eye closed. So there's always a necessity to have both. You always try to show, uh, to hide something, but there's always something that comes to the fore again. And that is what the film also shows, so that slowly and slowly the truth always comes out. Olá, Orlando Terra Brasil. From Brazil. For Claudia, I'd like to know whether you had some relationship with the, uh, the uh, author. Uh, are you any relation of him? His relative. And what about Sendero Luminoso? Can't you actually name it in the film? Was there a problem to actually name and shame Sendero in the film? Well, for one. On the one hand, the, bueno, uh, sí, somos una gran the Yosas Perú. are effectively eh, a very large family. Uh, he is the second cousin of my father. No that is the... Uh, so it's not a, a close relation, but uh, we are relatives indeed. And uh, what also helped me when I was trying, to, when I was working on Made in USA, he was the one who really pushed me towards directing. There will not, will not be that many opportunities for you to direct a movie, so really pursue your aim and uh, stick to it. And on the other hand, I didn't want to ever put a face on it. I did not want to show the oppressor directly. For example, at, at a certain moment where you see uh, Fausta with the drill and this photo, and this man in a in a kind of uniform who is uh, sitting there, and in a way she uh, relates this to this time of war. So uh, you know, you never know who is who, who is terrorist and who's the victim at that point. And 
The problem really was that terrorism and the military both uh, wreaked havoc and really uh, hurt people, and that is why I didn't want to enter into the political side of this, who did more and who did less, you know. That's the fog of war. Things are that happen that are terrible. And at the same time, this film was not a political film, but it was about the emotional, what happens, what remains of the intangible also. What happens to a whole society that really uh, encompasses the whole society and prevents the society as such to, from breathing. No se resuelve, ¿no? and, and it is, uh, y, y remains eso, unsolved in that tan sense. De lo that was why it was so important to talk about the emotional queda, aspect, about mama, fear, about what happens, uh, of, of what is really permeates eh, from that epoch, uh, from that era, and ¿no? what in a certain Muchas way gracias. has also been kept under a lid of silence. Yes, I'd like to ask a couple of questions here with what you're saying. There's a uh, tradition in Latin America in the 60s and 70s to uh, really look at the marginal uh, indigenous community and perhaps uh, there was some of the classics of Latin American film that treated with this topic, Brazilian film, for example. How do you see those? And second, how, how could you really... How were you able to talk about with such a warmth uh, of this community in, in Lima? How did you get close to them? Well, I tried to get close to the Andean world, and as far as the film is concerned, films about that have always interested me, but I also wanted to keep a certain distance from what had been done previously. I would wanted to venture a new gaze on it. And I always had the impression that, at least in Peru, I'm not sure how it is abroad, but I think that in Peru this topic has always been treated with a lot of uh, yes, caution, always sort of obliquely and with fear, sometimes sort of softening it, sometimes uh, being overprotective about it. And I really tried to portray the Andean world with the same liberty with which I would have uh, portrayed the urban landscape. And in this sense, I think that was really getting close to it. And as far as the, sorry, I'm not never, I never remember the second question. Sorry, what was the second question? Ah, vale. Muchas gracias. No, realmente sí. Trabajamos mucho tiempo. We worked a lot on the script. So I think that that work was really a very long process, and I was on it alone. But at the same time, I worked with really professional. People who accompanied me along the process. I have the art direction team. I had people who read the script. Torres, Patricia Bueno, who were who really closely followed the the writing process. Miguel Rubio, theater director, who helped me a lot. Coral Cruz, who was also one of the people who read the script, helped me a lot. From the very first first point, we of writing, we also started the investigation. It was an accumulation, an incredible accumulation of information that took place, because we were absolutely obsessed with getting as much information as uh, possible. We had uh, all kinds of uh, articles from uh, newspapers and books, and I asked a friend who, uh, who co actually comes from Huancayo, uh, that has a very, very strong tradition in weddings, and he W I asked him really to talk about these uh, um, films about these mass weddings and ev whenever he came to Barcelona he would bring a loads of film material, uh, material and show us asked how uh, these um, wedding rituals take place and that is where the idea came from the peeling of the uh, potato that if it is a very long peel it would be uh, a happy and fulfilled long life and I thought that was such an incredible image it was so clear what it meant and how something is perceived in that way and I think that was very rich so we did a lot of investigation, but of course uh, I was not alone. I was well accompanied, even though I wrote alone, I was well accompanied and I was well supported. So if I had invited everybody here, uh, the, the scene would be full of people here.
the stage. Yes, I'm from Brazil, and I think that it was very well said, I think that it was very, uh, very good what you said about uh, life and death and culture, but there was one scene that really uh, epitomizes this, and that is where uh, the uh, um, uncle says that he wants to, uh, he wants to uh, well, dig a grave for the mother and it becomes a swimming pool. So this is an image that could belong to uh, be part of a film of Lucrecia Martel, the Argentinian uh, filmmaker. Do you know her? Is she an inspiration to you? She is also somebody, a woman, who is a film director in Latin America who tries to express aspects of her country, of her culture, claro que sí, what would you say to that? Yes, of course. Muchísimo. She's somebody I admire casi deeply. Como de ver una de ella, it's almost as if I had, ve, after seeing a movie uh, of dice, hers, no, everything else, como reality como itself looks like a fiction. And she, no, es, cámara, she has a way of showing things as if the world really existed for the camera. So she has a, a gaze that is very, very interesting. Eh, an angle that is very ejemplo, interesting, and this uh, Magali, topic of the uh, swimming pool, I'll leave that to Magali, because or I owe it to Magali, eh, because when we were uh, uh, on the way to digo, Spain, oye, I asked her, bañera, look, take, take a bath, relax, you know, relax, you know, get rid of the stress. And she says, okay, and I went away, and, I, and she was so emotional because she had really spent a good long time in the bathroom, and she said, yes, but in our, uh, uh, but in our, uh, um, where I live or where I come from, we also do that because we just uh, dig holes and we put a plastic sheet in them and we fill it up with water and that is our type of uh, um, bathtub. So, and this is interesting. I felt that was really interesting to transform the grave into a swimming pool and that really uh, graphically describes or epitomizes this idea of the link between death and life. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the uh, shamanistic uh, healing methods in Peru, your main actress goes into the hospital. Does that correspond to reality as it exists now, that this shamanistic healing method does not correspond to reality? Or did you want to open up a different a parallel uh, path in your film? No, it's her uncle who takes her there. Her uncle is somebody who uh, came to Lima a long time ago, many more years before she came, then who really says, you know, let's not speak Quechua, he's somebody who really has taken up or embraced modernity fully, and he really has taken modernity on and really looks towards modernity and uh, he takes her to the uh, doctor and he's the one who talks to the doctor in the end. He's trying to um, talk about the situation and Magali, who is a bit removed, is really only uh, worried about what the uncle might think, not about what the doctor thinks. So it really depends on the person. I think nowadays in Lima, there is a coexistence of uh, strong cultures, people who come down from the mountains who are very tightly sticking to their traditions, and at the same time we have a very Western culture, and all of this lives side by side, alongside, in a very natural way, and I think that was what we tried to show. So in a way, the uncle is drawing her into Lima. You can't, you have to bury her here, you can't take her back to the village. Why do you want to do that? But she, he doesn't attack her, he doesn't force her, he keeps shielding her, protecting her. In the Andean, somebody who is afraid uh, always receives protection from his family. The family knows that this person is different, that there is a certain distance between this person and the family, but there's always a strong nucleus of protection, a shield towards the sick person, the ill person, and that was a way of dealing with it. Thank you. Thank you for your attention, thank you for your questions, thank you for your answers, thanks to all participants, thank you all, and have a nice day. Bye.
Danke. Muchas gracias. gracias.